welcome back this is Ray and I am the generals and in this episode I'm going to go over plasma and cloud formations it seems odd that planetary nebulae have been observed for decades in fine detail and yet they are considered to be oddballs nothing to do with other stars because they have a beautiful structure one of the best I can refer to is planetary nebula M2-9 and the picture there shows concentric cylinders formed by an electrical or electromagnetic pinch due to the current which is focused on a star. Here you can see some concentric circles being formed in a plasma stream uh, right above a lake. And here is a Z-pinch or being formed right next to a lake. And if you look at that picture you can see that these cylindrical sheaths of current close down on the star and come in at the equator and this is precisely what's happening at the Sun. It's also happening here on the Earth as above so below. The same process that powers the galaxies, powers the solar system and powers the Earth. Alright in this picture notice that the long uh, cloud takes a 90 degree bend and right at that 90 degree bend there's a circular structure and then you can see the plasma discharge uh, forming at the end of it. So what we're seeing out there by virtue of the IBEX mission and now a more recent report which confirms the IBEX results showing that high energy cosmic rays also come from that region is that these electric currents as they flow in they come in as filaments in a ring. This picture shows you that stable plasma rings can form in open air on the earth. This diagram shows you how the electric current flows inside of the uh, plasma ring. All right, here's a picture of a plasma tube in the atmosphere opening up into a larger plasma ring at the end of it. And if you look closely, you can see plasma balls around the ring at the bottom. And look to the left a little bit, you can see a, a plasma discharge taking place between two orbs. And where the material from the sun, which flows out in the equatorial plane of the sun, and meets those galactic currents, it acts like searchlights punching into a thin cloud. All right, here's a picture of a flickering discharge between two orbs. And where that light punches through the clouds is between negative and positive points on the Earth. And you can see the cloud there is lit up. Now notice the two orbs in the picture, right above the center of the cloud. And so what we see are the spots where the searchlights go through the cloud. In this case, the electric currents punch through the sun's plasma sheet, the solar wind, if you like. I notice that there are two double-orbed objects in the sky in this video, and that there is a uh, plasma discharge going on between both of them, uh, between both orbs and forming a third orb. All right, I believe what we're seeing here is the same thing that we're seeing in the next photo, except in a longer chain. All right, notice the two rows of bright lights on either so, uh, side of the uh, central channel in this cloud formation here. What you're seeing here is plasma moving through the atmosphere. Because plasma is charged ions, they, they don't move as fast as electrons do, so what you're seeing is the plasma moving through the atmosphere towards the photographer in this picture. Here's a film that shows you how slow the plasma moves along one of these Birkeland currents. Notice how the little cloud puffs form like balls on a string. Notice also that the little cloud puffs change shape and become more circular. I believe this is a uh, low humidity phenomenon here. I'll show you what forms in a high humidity environment next. Just like in battery research, the electricity travels between the poles quickly, but the plasma or the ions in the electrolyte uh, travels much slower. All 
in a high humidity environment, like over the ocean, I think you would get the Birkeland current forming this type of cloud structure. The very fact that the magnetic field has not changed direction also fits with this model. Remember this picture? The cloud is following the magnetic field line of the planet, and right where the corner is, that bright spot is where the electric uh, current is punching through the magnetic field and then you see the discharge um, at the end of the electric thing. If you look real close you can actually see a real thin electric filament going over to the discharge. Because the magnetic field traces the direction of the electric current and here if you look back at the planetary nebula M2-9 you can see that the current from the star travels outwards a great distance beyond the heliosphere in the same plane as the solar wind. And this is precisely what the Voyager spacecraft have found. David McComas of Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, Texas, wrote, the thing that's really shocking is this ribbon. Charged particles have apparently become bunched along the ribbon near the boundary, says McComas, but how they got there is still a big mystery. All right, here you see a plasma ring forming in the clouds and it's using the uh, water vapor in the clouds as a electrical conductor. The plasma ring is there's balls all the way around it. You can see it's all bunched up along the string all the way around. That same thing happens out in space. You can see the same pinching phenomenon in uh, water on a string. IBEX has discovered that the helio sheath is dominated not by the sun but by the galaxy's magnetic field. All right, here's another picture of a plasma ring forming in the atmosphere, and you can see the um, plasma tube uh, behind it. And if you look down in the lower right-hand corner, you can see a long uh, series of uh, circular clouds in a row on a string. Raging forest fire turns apocalyptic. Swirling smoke and flame spins up into a colossal whirlwind, a mega fire neighbor. Firefighter Tim Whitesell and pilot Doug Burtz, surveying the fire from the air, can't believe their eyes. The mood in the cockpit, uh, I think, for both of us was was just amazement, sheer awe at the at the power of Mother Nature. We, we couldn't tear ourselves away from it. We gotta go back, we gotta go look one more time. This fiery vortex is three quarters of a mile wide. I think we were both really just amazed at what we were seeing. A giant, rolling, twisting thing. Entire trees are tossed into the air like matchsticks. I remember seeing literally an entire tree and all of the roots still attached to it, all of it on fire, go flying by underneath the wing of the airplane, flabbergasting. Small fire natives are common, like this fiery twister in Kentucky. This is the strangest weather on Earth. Now this is not an alien invasion picture. This is a Birkeland current with a bunch of plasma balls moving along it. Where are these plasma balls traveling to? That's the big question. And the logical answer is they're traveling to the opposite polarity. Here's a picture of some red plasma balls meeting up with some purple plasma balls near some water. Here you can see plasma balls of one color rising up out of the ground and mixing with plasma balls of another color in the air. Here you see a whole bunch of plasma ball cloud formations. Somebody got a close-up of a plasma ball in this picture here and you can clearly see the strings of smaller plasma balls uh, coiled up inside of it like DNA in a nucleus. Here's some more plasma balls looking for water. 
here's a red plasma ball in what looks like an arid uh, environment another plasma ball near water and you can see a, the second plasma ball in the chain coming up in the distance uh, here's another plasma ball forming and you can clearly see the connection between the, the orb and the Birkeland current in the sky above it and uh, all the the Birkeland current is, has a whole bunch of little puff balls in it notice the polarity of the colors at the uh, equator now here's some highly charged plasma balls notice the arc discharge in the picture and also notice that when these plasma balls are charged up they're no longer just a fuzzy uh, vague ball they become very defined uh, structures notice that you can see strings of uh, plasma balls inside of the uh, larger orbs and also notice that you can see the polar regions on the spheres the uh, and if you saw my last video you can see that there is the pole that's on the top of the ball is a long strip and that strip is connected to two uh, poles at the other end of the sphere and, uh, and that's the same configuration that the earth has we have our south pole is a long strip our north pole is two hot spots when I first saw this photo here I thought it might have been photoshopped but if you take a close look at the details you can see that it's not because there aren't any contradictions take a look at the two guys in the photo the one guy is frozen solid uh, staring at the globe right in front of his face and the other guy is backing away as fast as he can from the other globe that's in front of him notice that the purple globe out in the lake is sitting right on the water and that it's uh, picking up energy and charging up the uh, heliosphere if you want to call it around it notice the circular ring of plasma balls around the polar region on the big sphere out in the lake and also notice that half of that sphere is probably underwater there are other points of light on that globe too you can see them scattered around the uh, equator mid latitudes in the uh, hemisphere that's above water and you can also see streaks of energy moving between those uh, plasma points you can clearly see that there's a lot of plasma in the atmosphere from the color of the sky and stuff can you imagine me and these guys uh, camping around that lake right there and then suddenly these plasma balls spring up out of the ground and the and the water right in front of them it scared the shit out of them I'm sure the light scattered around the big sphere out in the water looks similar to the uh, points on the uh, earth similar to this world grid map I'm going to close with a few images of quasars from outer space do you see any similarities between these images and the pictures I've been showing you here on Earth? The last picture in this series shows you that these plasma structures can form on any scale from galactic right on down to atomic. That's it for this video folks. I'll see you next time.